Demi Moore's at times odd social media posts tend to make news. From her days as reigning Twitter royalty to Instagramming pics that melt down the internet, keep watching for some of the wildest revelations Moore shared with her followers. After Demi Moore posed naked and pregnant for photographer Annie Leibovitz, she had no idea what was coming next. She told Interview, I didn't realize that it would spark that degree of controversy because I don't have that kind of thinking. You have to wonder if she feels the same way about her brown bathroom carpeting that went viral in 2020. In the wake of worldwide COVID-19 lockdowns, Moore posted an innocuous photo of herself working from home like so many other people were at the time. Referring to a podcast project, she tweeted, Behind the scenes recording Dirty Diana. She included two photos of herself perched on a couch in her bathroom with a laptop. But as Twitter user Alexis Wilson pointed out, one thing made more different from us little people pounding away at our laptops mid-pandemic, and it wasn't her movie star status. It was the brown carpeting and floral couch in her bathroom. Wilson wrote, Starting a Slack channel for the sole purpose of discussing why Demi Moore has both carpet and a couch in her bathroom. After the tweet storm over Demi Moore's decor, the story went viral, and even Moore herself noticed, tweeting, This thread has our whole family howling. She then appeared on Late Night with Seth Meyers to reveal more details about the unexpected decor choice. The house, she said, is the same one in Haley, Idaho, where her children grew up. And as for the brown carpet, she told Meyers via video call, That originally was a Bruce Willis choice. She also compared it to others who put rugs in their bathroom, apparently failing to realize that bathroom rugs are habitually machine-washed. Still, she said, I appreciate the interest that has gone into all of my little oddities because this place definitely houses a lot of my treasures. And I have had some big laughs over the comments with my family who know me well. Moore then pointed out that she has a giant tennis ball and a giant safety pin in the house as well. Twitter's membership started declining in 2016 as networks like Instagram and later TikTok grew. But for a while, Twitter was cool, and Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher were the app's reigning king and queen. The couple met up in 2003 at a dinner party, and despite their relatively lukewarm careers at the time, their Kabbalah-tinged marriage ceremony and May-December mystique only rocketed them higher on the pop culture A-list. Kutcher became Twitter king when he raced CNN to 1 million Twitter followers and won. His Twitter name was A plus K, while Moore's was a cheeky Mrs. Kutcher. So when Moore and Kutcher broke up in 2011, the former quote, agonized over what to call herself on Twitter, according to Ireland's The Independent. At the time, the G.I. Jane star said that switching up her handle was not at the top of her to-do list. It took until May 2012 for her to settle on Just Demi. In regards to her new handle, she tweeted, So hard finding a name that was fun, somewhat playful, and available. So for now, it will be Just Demi. It could grow on me. Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher pioneered the art of super high-profile, borderline cringy social media flirting, and there was one instance when Kutcher apparently went a bit too far. Moore and Kutcher attended her ex-husband Bruce Willis's 2009 wedding to Emma Hemming in Turks and Caicos. Afterward, Kutcher seemingly felt motivated to tweet some since-deleted marriage advice. He wrote, for me, it's about relearning that supporting my wife isn't about providing money and home, it's about supporting her desires, needs, and emotions. When she says time for bed, hop to. Good things await. He then posted a photo of Moore's backside clad in a white bikini as she was bending forward. She revealed that Kutcher had taken and posted the photo without her consent, tweeting back at him, He is such a sneak, and while I was steaming his suit, too. The photo even ended up on The Telegraph's 2009 Celebrity Pictures of the Year. A decade later, Moore elaborated on the situation, explaining it wasn't so lighthearted. I don't think you understand what you saw. Moore wrote in her memoir, Inside Out, it seemed like a good-natured joke at the time, but it was really just shaming. Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher didn't have any massive projects to promote in 2010, but they were both invited to the Golden Globe Awards regardless. On the day of the Globes, Moore tweeted that she'd be skipping the event. 
she posted a selfie along with the caption, feeling sick and having a bad hair day. She later clarified that it was more the sick feeling than the hair that kept her home. Kutcher, of course, couldn't keep himself from tweeting the entire time he was backstage. He joked on Twitter, FYI, Ricky Gervais is pounding Foster's backstage. The show should only get funnier. The term thirst trap, describing a skin-bearing photo meant to provoke reactions on social media, didn't hit the mainstream until about 2018, if NPR is to be believed. Chelsea Handler, the Kardashian-Jenners, and even Martha Stewart have indulged. But Demi Moore seemingly pioneered the art form back in 2011, when her own topless bathroom pic elicited headlines. Of course, this was far from the first time Moore stripped down. There was the aforementioned nude Vanity Fair cover, not to mention her movie Striptease. But still, Moore's self-portrait was apparently stimulating enough to become major news. The photo was considered newsworthy, even though it was only showing her bare back. Not to mention everyone had already seen Moore's naked bod. Page Six wrote, Demi Moore is at it again. The Daily Mail called Moore a quote, exhibitionist. But clearly, Demi's fans love her choice of wardrobe, or lack thereof. Demi Moore decided to let her followers in on her dental status in May 2009, when she tweeted photos in which she was missing a tooth. She wrote, I lost it and had to have it fixed. I personally thought this look went out after you were eight. Didn't know I would be rocking it again. This wouldn't be the last time Moore opened up about her deteriorating dental health. She ended up losing both front teeth in 2017, and she had a rather odd explanation for it. On The Tonight Show, she said, I sheared off my front teeth, um, and I'd love to say it was like skateboarding or something like really kind of like cool. She went on to reveal that the true cause was stress, which she considers, quote, one of the biggest killers in America. Blogger Perez Hilton has a long history of tormenting famous women for everything from their appearances to their personal lives. He mocked Demi Moore during her marriage to Kutcher, and she usually let it slide. But when he took aim at her daughter, Tallulah, Moore spoke out. In September 2009, Perez tweeted a linked photo and wrote, Tallulah Willis, 15, dressing like a slut. Look at her boobs. Demi, Ashton, and Bruce are great parents. Three weeks later, Demi bizarrely fired back. Clearly, Perez Hilton isn't taking violating child pornography laws very seriously. He might not, but there are a lot of people who do. She took it a step further, adding, Anyone who advertises, follows, or supports Perez supports violating child pornography laws. Hilton, of course, jumped at the opportunity to further his conversation with an A-lister who normally ignored him. He tweeted up a storm, threatening to sue more, while calling her statements, quote, libelous and defamatory. The spat apparently didn't end in a lawsuit, and Tallulah Willis seems to have thrived in spite of Hilton's ire. When COVID-19 started to spread worldwide in early 2020, people hunkered down at home with their families. And for blended families, this led to the question of which parents would stay with which kids. For the Moore Willis family, patriarch Bruce Willis decided to stay with his ex-wife and their older daughters in Haley, Idaho, while his current wife, Emma Hemming Willis, and their two children temporarily remained in Los Angeles so the younger kids could finish school. Demi Moore, Willis, and their daughters posted photos with the entire lockdown crew in matching green-striped pajamas. Moore captioned one photo, family bonding, and followers immediately started to wonder where Bruce's other family might be. Anonymous sources close to the family quickly cleared the mystery up by telling people about the blended family's plan to reunite after the school year. They revealed, Demi and Emma are close and all three get on great as a big blended family. There are no issues at all. Moore later confirmed on Naomi Campbell's YouTube show, No Filter with Naomi, that Emma and her daughters Evelyn and Mabel did eventually join Bruce and the crew in Idaho. She also called the time she spent alone with Willis and their daughters, quote, a blessing. We had some great times together. I mean, we shared a lot. Even with the potential drama of quarantining with Bruce Willis, the more women apparently got bored enough to go around in a circle and talk about which bird they would be if they had to pick. Demi's daughter Tallulah Willis posted a video to her clothing brand's Instagram page that showed the conversation. Demi went for a simple answer, stating she'd be a chicken. In the video, she said, They also are functional and they serve to bring about food for others. 
She then added, well, So then maybe I could be a pink chicken. Would pink you like chicken. a fluffy chicken? A pink yeah. fluffy chicken. Demi Moore is into fitness and making sure her body looks a certain way, perhaps because her career demands it. Unfortunately, this manifested itself into an eating disorder and exercise obsession for a few years at the height of her stardom, according to her memoir, Inside Out. The obsession persisted through her movies Indecent Proposal and Striptease. But for her next film, G.I. Jane, she actually needed to build muscle in order to portray a buff female soldier. After shooting Wrapped, she decided to go a little easier on her body. She wrote, I couldn't go on fighting my body and my weight. I had to make peace. I started by giving up hard exercise. I never went back into the gym in the house. Never. The room it occupied is now my office. Still, she hasn't given up on exercise completely. She revealed on Instagram in May 2019 that she had purchased a futuristic piece of workout equipment simply called Mirror, which retails for nearly $1,500. How it works is it shows the user's reflection along with a holographic personal trainer instructing them in the workout of their choice. She posted a video of the fancy piece of technology, along with the caption, My maiden voyage with Get the Mirror, 15 minutes at level 1. That's doable after not working out for over 4 years, right? I am stalling. At least the quick cardio dance video she queued up seems a lot more chill than a G.I. Jane gym session. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about celebrities are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.